All right, teachers, I got two things that I think are going to help a lot of you out, okay? I'm going to put these in two separate videos, but these are a couple of um, important things and time-saving things that uh, I think will help a lot of you out. All right, teachers, now that you have this really cool new class website, this is how you can password protect it so that you can add pictures and other things onto your website and not have to worry about it being out in the public. So adding a password protection on this is really like um, the share settings in a Google Doc. So what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to the top right-hand corner, click on the little person with the plus sign, and let's see. You can see it says share with others when you click on that the box that opens up is um, going to tell you who can look at this website so if your school district is like mine all of your kids have little Google accounts now my school has Gmail turned off so they're not real email accounts but they look like email accounts so it has like the student's name and it's at the school district, you know, dot com. And if your kids have that address, you would just type them in right here in this bar. And then you would make sure that on the right side, instead of editor or make owner, you're going to click on published viewer. Okay. And then you'll have a list of all your kids right here. And they're allowed to look at the published um, website. Okay, so it adds a layer of protection for you and it makes things really easy. If, um, let me remove this real quick. When, before you have anybody added, it's going to look like this. Okay, so um, if you come down here to links and you click on change, it's going to open up your share settings. So just like in Google Docs, there's share settings on here. The draft one, you should leave restricted because you're the one that's adding content to your website and nobody else should be able to see that. But the published site, you can change the settings on that. So if you write um, public or restricted, or there might be a third button that says um, anybody within your school district uh, domain, you could use that one as well if you want. That one would also restrict the people that get to see it would only be people that are logged into their school account. And then you wouldn't, at that point, not have to list every single person. It would just be people within your domain. Let's keep this on restricted. Click on done. And then go back in. Let's add somebody in there, okay? So I'm going to add my, my other self here, okay? And see how it defaults to editor? You're going to click on this little button. And you're going to change it to published viewer. Okay, and then um, I won't, don't need to notify myself. Oh, you know what? Let's add, um, I'm going to add my uh, school account in here. All right. Okay, so here is the published website. And I'm going to go in as, um, let's try incognito. Put the URL in there. And this is what is going to happen. Okay, it prompts you to log in. So let's log in. And now we can see it. Okay, so that is how you password protect your website. The second part of this, I'm going to put in a separate video so that it's searchable because um, it's so useful when you're working with Google Docs or here in Google Sites and you want to add people, instead of adding everybody individually like we just did, you can add a distribution group and it makes things a lot easier. So you can create a distribution group for your students or your parents, which is a good thing to do all the time. But then in here, instead of having to add everybody in there individually, you can just add a distribution group and we'll share to everybody in that group. So that's going to be in the next video. And if you're interested in finding out about that, it's a big time saver. Go to this next video and watch it. I'm Darren Akakihara and that is your tech tip of the day.